Let's get a rock, and we're back. We're back. 2023, Sun Devil Squire. It's been, yeah. So, long story short, I'm switching to YouTube now because I don't want to change the name of everything. And um, I lost my email to Sun, the Sun Devil Squire, like the Substack page. So I, I just forgot what it was. So I can't like do a find password or because I don't have the email. I, for some reason, I didn't write it down, which is you know genius, right? Anyway. Welcome back. It's me. We're in the um, my apartment's study room, but it's not the one with the door because that one's being op- occupied. So people come by and say hi, or like look at what I'm doing. It'd be weird. Um, Southern Utah is coming to Tempe, and uh, if you guys have been listening to what's happened the last couple days, um, it's not very exciting anymore. I get to see Joe Tangamo with us. So that'll be cool. Uh, I texted him so. Um, for those who don't know, Joe Dogamo was on me and Caden's high school football teams. Um, committed to Southern Utah. He's a D tackle now. He was a running back and linebacker, so that's pretty cool. Um, let's get to the nitty gritty. So ASU's athletic director Ray Anderson instituted a self-imposed bowl ban for the 2023 ASU football season as punishment for the ASU and Herm Edwards 2022 recruitment scandal. 2020, or sorry, 2020 recruitment scandal. 2020, uh, they were recruiting during COVID while they weren't supposed to because you know, COVID, you're supposed to lock down, blah, blah, blah. They were giving money to dudes. Dudes were like coming out and visiting during like April and May 2020 when the whole world was supposed to be in lockdown, which, <laughs> anyway, Ray Anderson is punishing the new coaching staff, all these new players in 2023 for what happened in 2022. He could have easily done it in 2022, Sorry, I said that wrong. He's punishing everyone for stuff that happened in 2020 instead instead of last year, 2022, when you know Ray, uh, when Herm Edwards is still here. He's Ray Anderson's buddy. Um, yeah, there's no reason to watch football if you're an ASU fan. There's there's no bowl game. They're not going to go anywhere. It's the last year of the Pac-12. They're they're not going to play in the offseason. Um, Ray Anderson sucked the life out of this um, franchise, this organization, this football team. And all the players are so, you know, all the seniors. There's like 18 seniors in, on the on the roster, eight of them in the starting lineup. And uh, they, they don't get to play in a bowl game their senior year. They got to just pray they get drafted or they pray they go to XFL or USFL or Canada or if they want to keep playing or just graduate, but nothing to play to, which – it sucks. It really sucks. And it's this is all Ray Anderson's fault. He should be fired. He should have been fired last year. But, I mean, that's what happens when you, when you let your friend hire his buddy. And Herm Edwards got off scot-free. Herm Edwards now at ESPN doing all this crazy stuff and no one. He got off completely scot-free. There, he's got no punishment for all the stuff he messed up. He messed He took this program back 10 years. Ray Anderson took the entire school back 10 years. And... Now they're going to the Big 12 where every sport but maybe baseball and football are just going to deteriorate. Um, this is brilliant. This is truly brilliant. It, oh, on top of all this, I didn't say it. The NCAA reported back in 2021 that they're not going to be – they're not going to do any more bull bans. So ASU is the only team, only school to impose a bull ban or have a bull ban imposed on themselves – for the, like, they'll probably be the last team ever to do it. For something, they're, they're banning dudes that, you know, had nothing to do with anything. So obviously this overshadows the news that was broken just last week on, I think, Thursday, I believe, is when I found out, that uh, Kenny Dillingham named a true freshman from Pittsburgh, California, Bay Area Rise Up, as his starting quarterback. Like, he's 19 years old. His name is Jaden Rashada. He was originally committed to Florida or no, Miami, Miami, and then over NIL deals, he um, flipped to ASU at the last minute. He's a four-and-a-half-star recruit. His father played here. He was a DB in the 90s, I believe, 92 to 96. And um, he's playing. He's going to be the QB1, mostly because Drew Pine has, a, I think, a hamstring injury. He's been out for two weeks. So Drew Pine, of course, the 11-win guy for Notre Dame last year. He was their quarterback, very similar to a, you know, uh, I want to call him like Sam Hartman. So they went from Pine to Hartman. So whatever, Notre Dame's Notre Dame. 
Um, a couple more notes is Elijah Badger and Will Schaefer will both be suspended for the first half after a into a fight or well, causing a fight against U of A at the last game of last year. Um, Badger is looking to capitalize on his breakout 2022. I mean, he's one of the best wide receivers in, in the Pac-12. He wants to get drafted. He's good. He's a lot like Debo Samuel or C.D. Lamb to me. Um, clearly not as athletic, but he's a stud. I like him second or third round um, in the 2024 draft. A couple more notes. Um, Xavier Guillory, Idaho State transfer. He's 4'2", 4240. He's incredibly fast. Great hands. Good route runner. Uh, he's a grad student. He's a grad transfer, and uh, I'm so interested in seeing how he does. Melkin Stovall is another transfer. He's pretty good. And then walk on Geo Sanders, who became wide receiver two last year. He's moving to the slot from the uh, Z spot. So that'll be very exciting. Uh, wide receiver coach Rashad, Rashad Samples is new at ASU, along with you know all the new coaches. And uh, last year he was a wide receiver coach for the Los Angeles Rams. He was very instrumental. And Cooper Cup turning into Cooper Cup. Very instrumental in Robert Woods turning into Robert Woods. Very instrumental in Ben Skoranek moving to fullback and dominating. And now he's at Arizona State with Elijah Badger, Xavier Guillory, um, Stovall, uh, Javen Jacobs, all these young guys, all these young cats that he can you know get his hands on, mold them. And the, the reason Samples is here, he's trying to become a note coordinator. And uh, you know that doesn't really go as well with the – no, no one, no one in the NFL is going to give him like that opportunity, really, because it's the NFL. College, however, yeah, let him cook. Um, so that's why he's back here in college. Um, a couple of running backs are probably going to, you know, get the most carries is Cam Scatibo or Scatabo. Not entirely sure how to pronounce it yet, but he's from Sacramento State. He's another grad transfer. Um, he ran for I think fourteen, thirteen or fourteen hundred yards last year. He's a big white guy. He reminds me a ton of Toby Gerhardt, which I think is pretty cool. And then De Carlos Brooks from Cal. Is another guy who's you know, just a running back. The O line is going to be Isaiah Glass, Sione Finau, Leif Fontano, Joey Ramos, and Emmett Bowl. Uh, that's from left to right. Uh, Jalen Conyers will be the tight end. He's been parading around uh, with Dillingham, activating the Valley. Um, so he's going to be interesting. The defense is going to consist of a lot of transfers and uh, the rest of the roster from last year, basically. Uh, B.J. Green is the only returning member to the starting defensive line. Um, and then two transfers, Tristan Monday and Deshaun Mallory, are going to be the D-tackles. And then uh, former five-star recruit Clayton Smith transferred over from Oklahoma. He's going to be starting on the right side, I believe. Um, and then he's going to be switching off with Prince Dorba and B.J. Green. And then uh, another guy to look over is Blazin Lana Wong. He's another D-tackle. He's from Hawaii. He's going to be a redshirt sophomore. Good player. Um, but he's got a lot to clean up, but he's probably going to play in the second half a lot. Um, linebackers, they're going with a 4-2-5 look um, this year, which is kind of similar to last year, but they ran a lot more three linebacker because they had Solis and uh, a lot better, like Schaefer was better. And uh, it'll be Trey Brown, who's a transfer, and he's going to be next to Tate Romney, who's also a transfer. And then backing him up is going to be Will Schaefer and James Jockman are the two backup linebackers there. Um, Jonkman, my buddy Drew, who works for the linebacker coach, he's been working there all summer. He loves John. He thinks James Jonkman, he, he, okay, here's what he said. He said James Jonkman, and that's D-J-O-N-K-M-A-N, Jonkman, um, is what you expect uh, Deion Sanders' cousin Junebug to be if he was a linebacker. And then a couple, a couple years ago, Deion Sanders said the most athletic dude he's ever seen was his cousin Junebug, who was a crackhead. That w- I had to look that up, and I was, I was just laughing. So the Junkman has just a personality, and he's no off switch. Tons of energy, most vocal dude on the field, and he gets into a lot of fights. So I'm interested to see what he does. Um, he could be pretty cool. And then the DB group is just a lot of familiar faces from last year's. Roe Torrance is pretty good. Mason Williams is there. Uh, Ed Woods, Jordan Clark, Chris Edmonds. Um, those guys are going to be in the rotation. Of course, the two boundary guys are going to be Woods and Torrance, and the slot is going to be Clark. The safeties, I believe, are going to be Edmonds, and then um, transfer Shamari Simmons. And then D Ford, Demetrius Ford, is also going to be a boundary guy. I think he can play some safety too. Um, I don't know too much about Southern Utah. Didn't really, you know, dive into this. I think a lot of guys come in, a lot of guys leave, right? But I do know their two best players are. Um, 
edge rusher Robert Horsey, who's on the um, the Senior Bowl watch list, and wide receiver Isaiah Wooden, who's on the same list. Um, the secondary is not very good at all, so I expect a couple deep shots early in the first half, maybe more in the second half, but definitely a lot of boundary, like, you know, um, corner routes, a little st- like smash routes, um, you know, testing the boundaries on these guys or taking shots down the middle of the field on like post routes or deep hooks or, you know, something like that over in the middle and trying to clog or separate. Um, I think the best position group is their D line. They don't have a ton of size, but they have a good, like a lot of good athletes and of course, very greedy. Um, so yeah, a couple stats I'm thinking. Um, I think Jaden Rashada, if I was going to, you know, put some bets on it, I'd say Jaden Rashada over 200 yards passing, um, over 25 yards rushing, probably under 50 yards rushing them. Uh, I'd say over two and a half touchdowns. I'm thinking three and that's total. So that's rushing plus passing. And I think over one and a half turnovers. I think he's going to have two or three turnovers, either that's picks or fumbles. Um, I'm going to go in Camp Scadabo, over 100 yards. I think they're going to feed him early and often. And I think that, you know, he's got he's a big guy. He doesn't go down easy. So I think he's going to get to the second level a lot and very early in the downs. So they're just going to keep going. I think that's, you know, and I think Rashad is going to come alive in the second half as a passer. Um, I think Guillory and Badger are going to be under 100 yards. Guillory, that one makes – kind of confuses me because he's playing the whole game. Badger, just second half. Easy, easy hit there. Um, final score, I'm going to say Arizona State, 42. Utah, uh, Southern Utah, 13. Very similar score to what we saw in 2021, the first time these two schools ever faced each other and the last time these two schools ever faced each other. I was at that game. It was awesome. It was my first football game ever, almost two years ago today. That's crazy. So, again, I'm very sorry that I can't get the, the blog up and working, but... This is, easier to, this, is, this is easier to access. I'm just going to send the link out. Um, we're back. Welcome to 2023. I'll have a review after this at some point, and then I'll preview the next game and then talk about stuff. And then the NFL draft will be awesome. I'm going to try to, like, get, like, data or, you know, like, actual clips. So that will be cool. Yeah.